Okay, fifth graders, seven dash eight. Uh, we're more than halfway past, uh, or past the halfway point for chapter seven here. So um, this is adding. Um, what is this? What did they title this one? Let's see. It's it, yeah, we're adding mixed numbers here. Okay. So um, in this first example, it says uh, looks like Rhoda mixes one and a half cups of sand with two and two-thirds cups of potting mixture. And then how much, how many cups of soil does she have? Okay. Um, so in step one, they set it up vertically and the common denominators are three and two. So um, it looks like they would use a common denominator of six, that would make sense. And then they add the fractions first. And so you end up with seven, six, which is an improper fraction because the numerator, which is what's on top, is larger than the denominator. And uh, then they add the whole numbers. And they're modeling this as they go. And you can see that, that they've added uh, the two and the one, and then they added the fractions. And notice there's seven of them. Uh, seven, one, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So uh, six of those would be equivalent to one. So you would add one to the three. And so it ends up being four and one sixth uh, cups of soil, which is a, that's actually, that was a pretty good model, pretty good example. Then it says Kyle used, under, under the convince me, Kyle used nine as an estimate for three and one sixth and five and seven eighths. Um, so three and one six, that's pretty close to three. Uh, five and seven eighths, that's really close to six. And if you use nine as an estimate, I think that's fine. Um, let's see here, so three plus six um, is nine. Um, let's see here. And then he got 9 and 1 24th for the exact sum. Is his calculated answer reasonable? Um, 3 plus 6 is 9. Uh, yes, it is reasonable. Okay. Um, let's move down and look at the guided practice here. So um, let's see, number one, how is adding mixed numbers like adding fractions in whole numbers? Um, well, <laughs> it's the same. It is the same thing. I mean, if you ask me, <laughs> it's kind of a silly question. Adding mixed numbers like adding fractions and whole numbers. That's, that's what you're doing, mixed numbers. Um, let's see here, number two, look at example on page 298. Why is the denominator six used in the equivalent fractions? Um, because six is a multiple of two and three. That was that very first example we were looking at. Okay, number three here, it says estimate and then find each sum. I'm not worried about you guys estimating. I mean, you can if you want, if you're not sure if you got the right answer or not. I'll fill in a couple of these boxes here. This is, that's gonna be two and, or seven and two rather, uh, 12 and 25, 12 and 25. Um, let's see here. I'll do number six. Let me do number six for you guys here. Let's take a look here. Um, so we got six and five twelfths. And we're adding uh, four and uh, five eighths. All right. You know, if we were to do an estimate on this, six and four would be 10. Uh, five twelfths is pretty close to a half. Um, five eighths, that's also kind of close to a half. So if I was to do a quick estimate, it'd be 11. But let's take a look. Let's see what we come up with here. So we got uh, 12 and eight. We need to find the common denominator. 
So 12 won't work, so then we double it, 24. Well, 24 will work. 8 goes into 24 three times, 3 times 5 is 15. 12 goes into 24 twice, 2 times 5 is 10. Now what do we do? Add the numerators. 10 plus 15 is 25 over 24. And then 4 plus 6 is 10. Are, are we done? No, because the numerator is larger than the denominator. How many times will 24 fit into 25? Goes in once. So we're going to add that 1 to 10. 10 becomes 11. There's one left over, 24. So the answer is 11 and 1 24th. All right, let's move down. Um, I'm going to fill in some of these boxes for you here. How about 1 and 4? And then 5 and 6. And then we got 10 and 16. And the last one over here, 12 and 14. That should help you guys. Um, let's see here. Looking to see if any of these... 14 is easy because they both have a common denominator of 4, so that's already done for you. Um, how about 18? Let's look at 18 together. I'll do that one really quick. So we have 3 and 11 twelfths, and we're adding 9 and 1 16th. Oh, man. What would be the common denominator for that one? Start with the largest number. So 16 uh, plus 16. What is that? That's 32. Does 12 go into 32 evenly? No, it does not. So that means we have to add another 16. So that would be 8 and 4. Does 12 go into 48 evenly? Yeah, it does. Actually, four times. So 48 will work. 48. 48. All right, 16 goes into 48. How many times? One, two, three times. Three times one is three. 12 goes into 48 four times, and 4 times 11 is 44. What do we do now? Add the numerators. What's 44 plus 3? That's 47 over 48. 9 plus 3 is 12. So that would be the answer to number, um, that was number 18. So 12 and 47 over 48, which cannot be reduced. 2 doesn't go into um, 47 evenly. Do you guys know how to tell if a number is, is divisible by 2? Like 47, for example. You know how I know that 2 will not go into it evenly? I look at the last number in any digit. And does 2 go into 7 evenly? No, it does not. I mean, like I could, I could write a really large number here, like um, 5,629. Does 2 go into that evenly? Um, I put, I said 29, I put 92. Um, just look at the last digit. Does 2 go into 2 evenly? Yes, it does. So this whole number here is divisible by 2. How about, a, how about like 6,478,311? Does 2 go into that number? All you do is look at the last number. Does 2 go into 1 evenly? Nope. So that number is not divisible by 2. All right, that's kind of just an aside there. So there you go. All right, let's look at, um, let's look at the last page. Problem solving. Uh, what's the distance from the start to the end of the trail? So it looks like you're going to add up 3 and 7 eighths and 2 and 5 sixths. I think you guys could do that. Then it says, B, it says, Louise walked from the start of the trail to the bird lookout. Okay, she went from there to there. And then back. All right. Um, did she walk longer or shorter distance than if she had walked from the start of the trail to the end. Explain. Well, first off, so 
I mean, you could add three and seven eighths twice because that's walking there and back again. Okay. Well, you know, three and seven eighths is larger than two and five sixths. So to answer that question, um, if you'd walk from the start to the end of the trail. Yeah. So, um, Did she walk longer or shorter distance than if she had walked from the start of the trail to the end? Yeah. So this twice is going to be more than this plus that because that's smaller than three and seven eighths. All right. I had to think about it, make sure I was reading that question correctly. So you can explain that, put that in your own words here. Then C, it says on another day, Louise walked from the start of the trail to the end. Okay. So she walked all the way to the end and then she forgot her binoculars at the bird lookout so she walked from the end of the trail to the bird lookout and back so she walked to the bird lookout and then back again um, what's the total distance she walked well so what are you going to be adding you're going to add um first off and you would have done this first here three and seven eighths plus two and five six two and five six that's the whole length of the trail but then she did two and five six twice two and five six plus two and five six and then these two answers that you get you're going to add those together to get the answer to C, which is um, going to be over 10 miles, a bit of a walk. All right, um, what do we got here? Higher order thinking, twice a day, Cameron's cat, that's twice a day, that's important, eats four ounces of cat food and two ounces of wet cat food. Okay, dry food comes in five pound bags, wet food comes in six ounce cans. Okay, so how many cans of wet food should he should he buy to feed his cat for a week? Well, first off, how much wet cat food does she eat in a week? So two so she eats twice a day and two ounces of wet cat food each time. Twice a day. So that's four ounces per day, right? That's the wet. I'll put wet here. And then it's for a week though. So it's going to be four times seven. That equals 28 ounces a week. Okay. So I'm writing this down as I'm thinking about it here. And then um, wet cat food comes in six ounce cans so I'll just start adding whoops um, got to write something you can see with so six ounce cans so six 12 I'm adding six each time 18 24 30 all right it's got to be more than it has to be more than 28 because the cat is eating that many ounces a week. So it has to be 28 or greater. So how many cans are we talking about here? One, two, three, four, five. So the answer to letter A is five cans. All right. I think you guys could do the rest. Uh, how many ounces of wet cat food will be left over at the end of the week? Well, what's the difference between 28 and 30? And then um, how, many, uh, how many days can he feed his cat from a five pound bag of dry food? Oh, what a good question. Now remember, there's, and they said it right there, there's 16 ounces in a pound. And uh, the dry food comes in a five pound bag. Think about how many ounces he eats in a day. All right. So, all right, um, 21, how many seeds does she have left? You could do that one, 22, John added 2 and 7 twelfths, 5 and 2 thirds, and he got, is his answer reasonable? 
Um, well, I mean, you could actually just go ahead and add those two up and see if it's close to seven and a quarter. Um, I'm kind of thinking not. 23 you can do and 24 um, looks like you're adding one and three quarters, one and a third, and then back again. So it says write an addition sentence. So an addition sentence, it's, it's, they're telling you to write an equation. So it's one and three quarters plus one and one third um, plus, from home, he skated on the lake, then he skated back home. So he skated one and three quarter miles from home to the lake, and then he skated one and a third miles around the lake, and then back home again. So then you're going to add another one and three quarters equals. And, and then you have to add all three of those up. Okay. Um, and you can do that. We've done a couple like that. So one and three quarters one and one third and another one and three quarters okay you can add up multiple fractions you just have to find a com common denominator for all the denominators that are in the fractions that you're adding all right okay that's it um, i will see you guys tomorrow